Hello, everyone. Um, I will answer questions, uh, but first, not a whole lot to report. After last week, I felt that we gave you guys a whole lot of information. Um, this week, I mean, we're getting ready to roll out our VIP packages for April. Um, again, we're trying to make those as interactive as possible with fans that purchase the VIP packages. So those will probably come out on Monday of next week with some different things that we're doing with the talent and also trying to engage platforms like Twitch and GWN. So we'll fine tune those over the weekend and then roll those out on Monday, hopefully. Um, and then impact tonight, I think the next three weeks of programming all kind of tie in together and, um, you have a, a really strong show tonight and then uh, it really kicks off crossroads, which will be in, uh, March 8th. So a couple of weeks, three weeks, uh, we'll have Crossroads. I think these themed episodes of Impact do really well. Um, Crossroads will feature five championships all being defended in one night. So it should be a fun show. Um, so between that and the VIP, I don't really have anything else other than the opportunity to answer some questions for the next few minutes. So, Ross, if you want to go ahead and open up the line. Perfect. We will uh, strictly ask uh, questions at this point for Josh. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi there, Josh. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge in the UK. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, cold uh, wintry night here in Glasgow. Uh, I just really wanted to ask you about the UK market, if I can. And obviously, um, the impact has been moved back a couple of times over the last several months now to quite a late uh, airtime. Uh, I was just wondering if this is a, a long-term thing, as far as you know, and also, does this mean that we may be a bit further off a, a, a future UK tour than we might have imagined? Um, I'll address the timing of the show first. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal. I just think that, um, uh, and, and we'll have some information coming out sooner rather than later of how many different places and how the timing of the show works for everyone in the UK. Um, I know that I deal an awful lot with our, with our people in the United Kingdom. Some of them are on the call right now. Um, most of them watch the show on VOD. Um, I know that our graphics designer, who's also based in London, he watches the show uh, on, on Monday morning so that he can watch it in high definition, um, that it's not offered on the first airing. So I know that it's been moved around that initial airing, but I think that for the majority of people, um, you, you know, you have the opportunity to watch it at your leisure, to watch it when you want. Um, you know, I don't even... You know, Friday nights, I think, is a tough night for TV. Um, I always speak very candidly with you guys, so I think that, you know, Friday nights are tough in general. And then, you know, to move from 9 to 10 to 10 to 11 um, and play with it that way, you know, I think that you can watch it on Saturday, Sunday, um, and then, you know, have everything that you need to be current with us as we get ready for the next push of the next week on Monday morning. Uh, and then you Fantastic. said something about a UK tour. Uh, I'm not sure where we are with that right now. Um, I know that we want to go, and I think it was a big deal that um, Ed and Scott and Don went over a couple of weeks ago and met with everyone, and, and that's always sort of been how it's gone, where they or who, who our executives go over first and then and then the tour follows. So hopefully um, we're over sooner rather than later. That's great, Josh. Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, this is Biju from uh, Sports Kida. I uh, I had two questions. I think I'll ask them together. The first is, uh, does Impact plan on uh, coming to India for another round of tapings? And the second is, I read a report online that Rosemary had uh, been injured at an indie event. Uh, how much truth is there to this uh, rumor? Um, again, with the India stuff, I know that... Um Ed Nordum, our president, went over um, to, to India with Sanjay, so same as the UK. Hopefully that leads to us going back over soon. Um, Rosemary, I think she might have tweaked her knee. I don't think there's anything too, too serious about um, uh, her injury. Um, I spoke to her a couple of times. Um, I, I was told from Talent Relations that she was a little banged up in an indie, but I don't think it's anything um, 
and again, I, I don't know for a fact, so, um, but I don't think it's, um, hopefully it's nothing that will change any plans for when we are all together again uh, in April for redemption. Hi, Josh. Stephanie for Teacher Magazine in UK. Um, I wanted to have your opinion on, on, on your experience of now being doing commentaries with Sanj. I'm sorry, with Sanjay Dutt. Um, how are you feeling with that? How is it working? And do you feel great with it? Yeah, I feel great with it. I think Sanjay is doing an amazing job. Um, I said it on the call last week. I'll say it again here. Um, I think Sanjay brings a different, um, you know, he, he brings an experience, experience value to commentary. He's a former X Division champion. He's been a part of Impact through uh, different decades, different regimes. Um, he's seen it all, and he's he's dialed in. And to me, that's one of the biggest things that you have to do uh, in wrestling commentary is you have to be dialed into everything that's happening. And Sanjay certainly is. You have to know um, Twitch events and one night only events and what shop impact is doing. And you have to be, you know, completely in tune with what the company is doing, the things that we're trying to, to accomplish and where we're going and what we can do with that two hour vehicle, um, helping get the talent over, helping get uh, products over, helping our pop partners. Uh, you know, the whole thing all moves with this one vehicle that is our two hour show each week. Well, Josh, I appreciate uh, 10 minutes out of your time. I know you got a, a busy day. Well, when you get done walking the dog, you had a busy day. Uh, thank you. And we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Thanks Ross. I do it all, buddy. Multi-talented. Let's bring in the real guest for today. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs. Welcome to the uh, teleconference. What's happening? Uh, too much. How are things uh, in your world? In my world, I live in the same world as you do, and uh, it's fantastic. Well, it's actually not too bad. It's sun, sun's out in Chicago for you today. Um, all good? Yeah. You, you like it in the Chicago cold. winter? Uh, it's, it's cold. It's really cold. All right. Well, we've got a lot to talk about with you. Um, your thoughts on where things are at uh, 2018 for Impact Wrestling? I mean, that's a really broad question. Uh, and the truth is, uh, 2018, uh, right now, man, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a rebuilding uh, phase for Impact. Um, you know, probably no punches there. Um, it's been through a lot of different regime changes. And now with, uh, you know, with Scott Moore and Don Callis at the helm, and then, you know, Sanjay Dutt and Creative, uh, I think there's a lot of people there that I've worked with uh, that are starting to kind of like to stabilize the company, if that makes sense, both financially and creatively and with the roster. Uh, so it, it's going to be about, uh, now that things are sort of stabilized, creating a product and creating a vision that uh, uh, brings, brings back old fans and brings in, brings in new fans. All right. Well, we will open it up for questions for uh, Jimmy at this point. Again, if you would please media, identify yourself, identify your media outlet, and if we could have one question alone for Jimmy so we can move along to different media, and we'll uh, come back to you for a second question, if time permitting. Sean Rossap of Fightful.com here. Jimmy, you, you came to Impact shortly after your, your WWE departure. Did you have discussions with any other companies, and what made you land on Impact Wrestling, if so? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely did. Uh, you know, full disclosure, I talked to Ring of Honor about going back there, and uh, but uh, I, I did that for a lot of years. I was with Ring of Honor for for ten years, and uh, I, I wanted to do something new. You know, I had a conversation with Scott and and, and Sanjay on the phone about uh, about different things and impact, and um, it just it just seemed like a nice fit. It was something I wanted to try out, and so my first time in uh, uh, Ottawa was kind of just a, a test run, a test go to see, to see sort of how, uh, how the fit was. And the fit felt good. I mean, like I said, we're in a rebuilding phase, and um, they needed somebody who, who could wear a lot of different hats and do a lot of different things, and I have experience doing all those things as far as, you know, writing and creative and helping guys with promos and helping guys with matches and being an on-air character as well. Uh, so, uh, it, 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 it was nice, man. It was, it was a nice week in, in Ottawa and it sort of solidified that, uh, uh, impact was kind of the direction I wanted to go. 
Uh, just to follow up really quickly on that, I'm assuming the ROH conversations happened when you kind of made the cameo on their their pay per view. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And afterwards, you know, I go I go back a long way with 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 Ring of Honor. You know, back to 2003, and with the, you know the Booker, you know Hunter Johnson, and I are are, are longtime friends. So of course, he was he was the first person I called. You know, before before the news of me getting fired from WWE broke. I mean, I called him a couple days. Uh, you know, the news, the news when I got fired didn't break until almost a week later. So he was the first person I called. We set up that little uh, cameo for me on their uh, on their pay-per-view. And, and we talked about a role for me after that. And uh, I told him I was in discussion with Impact. And, uh, you know, that's, that's where I ended up. So, Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Hi there, Jimmy. It's Adam from uh, the Impact Lounge in the UK. Good evening. What's up, Adam? Yeah, uh, well, since you've joined the company, obviously you've had a little stint on uh, commentary. You, you've been a manager. There was talk that you joined as part of the creative team. Can you maybe just clarify what your exact position within the company is and also where you want it to go, where you see the role evolving to? Uh, I mean, the truth is, man, uh, uh, like everybody there has a lot of different roles and uh, my, my job's no different. Uh, and the truth is, man, I'm on a handshake deal with Impact, uh, and that was that was part of the deal coming in for me was that uh, I I felt so restricted for two and a half years, uh, and and so c- coming in now with sort of uh, the, the freedom to to grow where I want to and do what I'm best suited for. I didn't feel like that was always uh, the case at the last company I worked for. So uh, it, it's cool for me to be an on-air talent and be managing Congo Kong, a guy who, you know, yo, I've known Congo Kong for like almost 20 years, like longer than anybody else in the wrestling business. Uh, and it's cool to do that. And it's cool to, uh, to be of value and be of service creatively and, and be of value and service to the guys when they're putting together ma- their matches or, uh, or, or coming up with promos and, and, and calling them and, uh, you know, and helping produce the, the, the television. So it's a, the, the truth is, man, it's a lot of different things, and I go where I'm needed, and that's, that's the way the company's working right now. Fantastic. Hey, Jimmy, it's uh, Jack from Cultaholic.com in the UK. I hope you're good. Um, obviously, you spent some time with WWE and creative. Uh, how does the creative process differ between WWE and Impact Wrestling? Uh, I think one of the advantages we have here um, uh, is that, you know, right, right now, and it, it's, uh, there's not a lot of advantages to it, but, you know, we're taping a lot of weeks of TV in a row. Uh, we, the, the last time we taped, like, what, for 12 weeks and six days, and that's a lot. Now, what's cool about that, though, is uh, we, we, we can tell a story uh, long-term. And in WWE, there, there's not a whole lot of that. It's very, very week-to-week at the whim of, uh, of the box. So you can write something on, on Friday, and by Monday, it's, that, that's out the window. Uh, so, so the creative process we have going on here, while, while it is similar in a lot of ways as far as putting the TV together and how we structure it and, and whatnot, um, uh, it, it, it's nice that we can tell long-term stories. And we have more freedom, too, to, do, do, uh, to try out different things and experiment uh, for different things. And that's kind of the time we're at right now, too, with Impact. You know, it, it is a time to experiment. It is a time to try new things. It's, it, it, I mean, to me, just for, for, for my money, man, it's a time... To, uh, to, to try something and fail. Uh, if, it, if it means failing, but it means trying something. With WWE, it's, a lot of times, creatively, it was like, you tread water. That's what you do. Because you have three, three plus hours of Raw today, and two hours of SmackDown, and an hour of 205 Live, you do the same thing the week after that, the week after that, the week after that, the week after that. Week after that. And it's just, you tread water to get to the next week. And uh, I, I feel like uh, it impacts we can do a little, uh, a little more than that. All right. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Hi, Jimmy. It's uh, Don from Slam Wrestling. Um, What's I, up? I was, watch- I, I was watching an RNF video shoot with the uh, Young Bucks uh, a while ago, and they mentioned about you being so confident and relaxed before a match. Well, you know, they were kind of freaking out and stressed out. Uh, so what is your approach um, when you wrestle a match or when you go out in front of people? Um, like, why are you so relaxed and confident? 
I, I know that was that was a particular story that they told. Uh, I think that was when me and the, the now Seth Rollins put them over for the tag title. It's not a tour wrestling girl. I, I remember seeing a clip of that. Uh, I mean, look, man, when you've been doing this uh, X amount of number of years, I have, there's a certain, like, I mean, there's a confidence. That, but the, you, you, I say this. I still have nerves. I have nerves uh, until the second I walk off the curtain. And uh, then, then you get the reaction of the people, and that sort of like quells those nerves because uh, you know if, if you're, you're you know before the match, uh, you, you try to visualize things and you try to picture how things are going to go. And anytime you're kind of looking into the future, there's a certain anxiety that comes with it. Uh, so I mean, I'm, I'm sure that that particular day, you know, when you feel like you're in control of things, you feel confident. And other times, uh, you don't know you don't know what's uh, going to happen. And this. Uh, you know, it was so weird, uh, you know, leaving the independence and then coming back. And uh, it, it did shake my confidence, man. And, and when working for WWE shook my confidence. You know, it was a place where, uh, you know, and, and this isn't to, to slam it. It's just I didn't feel very valued. Uh, I felt that uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, you, you lose your confidence when, when, when you don't get positive reinforcement uh, a lot. And so coming back to the independence, man, I, I, I had more nerves than I had, you know, 10 years ago working with the Young Bucks. Uh, as far as, like, you know, are people going to remember me or, or uh, you know, it's just, you do I still know how to do this? Am I still okay at this? Should I still be doing this? Uh, so it, it's, taking, it's taking a little bit of time to get my confidence back. That's the truth. Hey, Jimmy, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com again. As, as it pertains to your schedule with Impact Wrestling, obviously the taping is a lot different, but uh, how does that affect things when you have so much to do in such little time as opposed to WWE where it's that constant grind and that constant like travel and things like that? How has that changed for you in that regard? Uh, I mean, it definitely is it's a different thing, right? Uh, yeah, WWE. There, it, the, the schedule is twenty four seven. Man, it was. It was. You know, you fly out Sunday to do Raw Monday to do drive SmackDown Tuesday, fly out Wednesday in the office all day Thursday, meeting with events on Friday, writing Raw and SmackDown on Friday and Saturday. You know, it was, it was just nonstop. Uh, with, with Impact, it thinks it was crazy. Um, uh, it's like right now, it's like the calm before the storm, and uh, you know, in the next few weeks, we're going to start putting together creative. Uh, for the for the upcoming uh, shows and uh, and then come uh, you know we did this this set of tapings at the beginning of January and it was like it was like nothing I've ever done in my life man it was like six days taping you know two two episodes of TV per day and then afterwards you know going back to the hotel room that night and then looking over you know the, the next day's creative and staying up. So 6 a.m. doing that and, you know, working these, you know, 18, 20 hour days, you know, six days in a row. And I remember, uh, you know, Scott Moore and I were, we, we, we took the, a lot of the brunch of the work. You know, Sanji was at home. He had, uh, he had just gone through, uh, through surgery. So he couldn't come down for these January day things. Uh, so, you know, Scott and I were up every, every night. So, you know, four or five, six in the morning, you're working on the next day shows. I look at Scott and I go, uh, after, after one of the nights, you know, it's the morning now. I look at him, I was like, God, I worked with Vince McMahon for two and a half years, and it's the hardest I've ever fucking worked in my life. Uh, so it, it, it is it is a lot uh, rolled into one. Yeah, I wondered about that because you you've got all you. It's almost like a cram session. It would seem like absolutely, absolutely, and and, and man, that's not the ideal way to. Uh, to, to take the TV. And I think everybody at Impact's aware of that. And I think we're, we're, we're trying to, to break that down and break that in, into, into smaller chunks uh, because it's just, it's just too, it's, it's overwhelming creatively to do that. It's overwhelming work-wise. It's overwhelming for the guys. You can't get into the flow of things as, as well as you can. Uh, just with just a little less. And if, if we just did four weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, I think that'd be, that'd be really helpful. Uh, or six weeks at a time. But, you know, 12, 12 is a beast, man. 12 is a beast. Uh, and it, like I said, it does have its positives in that we can tell like congruent stories and 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 things of, of that nature long term. Uh, but it, it it's definitely not the ideal way to take television. And I think everybody's aware of that. Thank you. Hey Jimmy, this is Big Ray for Wrestling dot com. Thanks for joining us here. How are you today, sir? 
doing fantastic. All right, cool, cool. I have a cool question for you. I think it's p- going to be pretty cool. Uh, maybe you'll think it's cool. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of James Ellsworth out there, and recently he's won the Intergender Championship, and oh, he's going to be defending this title all over the world, apparently. Any chance that the princess would face a James Ellsworth for that Intergender Championship? And if so, how would you book that match being a, a writer, a former writer for the WWE, and now currently working with Impact? Man, I love James Ellsworth. You know, I... I uh... I was on James's the, the first time he was on Raw. I was on his promo uh, where he where he wrestled uh, uh, Braun Strowman in Pittsburgh, and so I helped you know produce write that promo with James and uh, you know put in the line of uh, you know he he asked if he could say the line of uh, can any any man with two hands has a fighting chance and uh, so so uh, yeah I mean I, I do like James today. He actually called me up. Uh, after his W release, we both, both got released around the same time, and uh, he he ran this kind of this idea of Bobby's intergender thing. I think it's I thought it's awesome. Uh, I think it's great, and nobody's nobody's doing it. Uh, so I mean, I I'm sure I'll see James around. I don't know if I'll uh, don uh, don the uh, the princess outfit or not to to go one on one with James. Uh, but I'd always I'd love to love to wrestle. Him. I think he. I think he's a good talent. He was worked for a really nice guy and worked for a really long time. It's it's cool to see hard work pay off. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to watch. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. Hi, Jimmy. This is Nick Hausman with WrestleZone.com. Thanks for taking the call today. Oh, what's up, Nick? Uh, I just wanted to ask. You kind of touched on it a little bit, but obviously, uh, when you left WWE, there were a lot of reports about you know, different unhappinesses you had about the backstage atmosphere. I was just wondering, walking into Impact Wrestling, were there any changes or requests you had about the way that Impact handles itself uh, with talent backstage? No, man. Like, when I when I came in Ottawa uh, to Impact, it was it was as a guest, and it was just for, for both our sakes. You know, when I got when I got released from WWE, Scott Demore, who I've known for you know 16 years old, called me up and said, "Hey, we should probably talk and see if there's there's mutual interest or, or mutual, uh, you know, if there's things to be gained by by us working together." And we, you know, we decided I would come to Ottawa. Uh, so it was, it was purely to see if it would be a fit. And I don't think I wasn't going to try to force anything as far as you know making requests i don't think they were uh, uh trying to force me into a spot it was like if if i could be beneficial to the company cool like they would they would uh they would bring me in and uh we worked together and i i thought after the week i had a really good time and i above all else man like i felt valued and uh, and and that might seem like a small thing but like for, for me at the time and and, and right now it's it, it was a big deal. It was a big deal to feel valued by not just not just the the, the boys, not just the you know the, the locker room. Because you know in WWE I did feel that way as far as a lot of the guys go. I had, I had a great rapport with so much of the talent, but uh, you know some of the office uh, and I was office, but the, some of the bosses I didn't. Uh, and I I felt I felt valued. I felt heard. I felt that my ideas were uh, you know. I was contributing, and uh, yeah, man, it, it just, it's just, it's just, it's felt like a good fit. It really has, and that's that's no, that's no bullshit. Like I don't. Here's the thing, like, um, like I, I said before, I'm on a handshake deal with, with Impact, so I don't have like a company line to tow. I don't like just uh, so by me saying like, yeah, I, I'm I'm enjoying my time there. It's not like a, it's not like a line of bullshit. It's like it's, it feels good to be at a place that I like being. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Jimmy, we got an email question from uh, uh, Lee Mead at uh, Alive Radio. His first question is, are dark jeans, smart shirt, jacket, and waistcoat alongside some nice trainer boots, acceptable attire for work? Uh, what, what, what was the whole get up again? Run it by me. Dark jeans, smart shirt, jacket, and waistcoat alongside some nice trainer boots. Hey man, if, if you can pull it off, it works, right? You know, and, and I, I don't know what the context of this question is exactly, uh, but I, I know, uh, you know, as far as in, in my life and where, where I've been and, and where I am now, uh, like I always wanted to be judged by the content of my work, not the color of my tie. Uh, so, uh, so it's it's cool, like to me at, at Impact, 
I get to dress like me, and nobody has a prop with that. So uh, I'll bring it back around to that. All right, give me with one more email question for you. With such change coming to Impact, what do you see as the biggest challenge Impact has, and what's the biggest positive moving forward in 2018? Uh, the biggest challenge, undoubtedly, is um, is getting uh, the, back to the trust of of the, of the fans. You know, uh, Impact and, and previously TNA has asked the fans uh, and, and gotten their trust so many times. Only to, to to break that, only to screw them over, only to have you know these 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 I hate to use the word regimes, but these these different these go through these different cycles of really really burning the audience, and uh, here we are saying no no no, but this time for real, this time for real, and I I do believe it's real. Seeing the people involved, uh, seeing the people at the helm, like I I do think it's real. Uh, at least I have my trust in them. So if if uh, if we get burned, we all get burned together this time. Uh, I, I think that's 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 undoubtedly the biggest obstacle um, at play, uh, and and I don't know exactly what it's going to take. I don't know if just you know putting on some good wrestling is going to be enough. I think we have to come out with an innovative product, and I think uh, a lot of a lot of what is an impact. There, there is some like cool like innovation stuff. I think that the guys uh, all put the backstage segments, the backstage sort of skits, the way they're put together in sort of a cinematic feature. Uh, you know, we've got a few guys that are really smart doing that, um, uh, who, who are who are brilliant to work with to to direct that, produce that. Uh, so I do think I, I think it's, it's stuff like that, stuff that's different, stuff that's unique that will hopefully uh, earn the trust of the fans back. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sports Kida. My question is, uh, did you get a chance to work with uh, Austin Aries during your time in WWE? And uh, do you think he will fare better in impact uh, than he did in WWE? Thank you. Uh, yeah, a lot of work with Austin Aries from, uh, you know, from you know, in, in the independence to, to, to Ring of Honor to WWE and now to Impact. So him, uh, he and I have had uh, you know, careers that have, have intertwined a lot, a lot over the years. I've always been a big Austin Aries fan. I thought part of the problem is WWE he was, he was miscast. You know, uh, we had just turned Neville in, as a heel, and we we brought Aries in as a babyface. And like anybody that knows Aries, uh, kind of knows that he's uh, kind of an unlikable uh, a guy, you know, naturally in, in a lot of ways. And he'll tell you that himself. Uh, so I, I was upset that in WWE he never got that heel run that I think uh, he needed to, to to get over that hump. Uh, and certainly right now at Impact, you know, we, we have a baby face role. Um, I don't know what the future holds for that, but I think Aries is uh, extremely talented. I've always been a big fan of his, uh, and I would I would love it. Um, you know, he I thought I thought him coming into Impact was. It was good for both of us, both of us being Impact and uh, and Austin Aries, and I um, I think with Aries, he can go as far as he wants to go, as far as he wants to take things. I don't know if uh, he's at the point. I don't know what what he wants out of his career right now. I mean, he's done so much. Uh, I don't know if he wants a full time schedule still. I don't know if he like. I don't, I don't know anything. Uh, about it, but I think if he uh, if he stays with Impact for uh, as long as he stays there, he'll have a, a a spot up top. Hey Jimmy, it's Big Ray from OneWrestling dot com again. Uh, so the manager's role is, from what I understand, to shine the talent or the the pro wrestler, and uh, you're doing a great job. First and foremost, uh, I'm a big fan of Kong, Kong, his unique look, the abilities in the ring. I just want to give you a couple of minutes to just maybe put over Congo Kong and talk about his in-ring in talents. And also, is there a possibility that the beauty in Jimmy Jacobs will bring out some beauty in the beast of Congo Kong? Uh, so uh, I've known Congo Kong uh, since 1998. So like right under 20 years right now, uh, he broke in the same place, uh, that I started like hanging around wrestling, uh, when I was like 14 years old. Uh, so to be, 
uh, like like the first the first match I ever I ever wrestled as a heel, it was, a, it was me and him in a tag team, and like back in like 1999. And so it's super cool right now on a personal level uh, for me to to be with this this guy that I've known for so long on national television together. I, I posted some picture on my Instagram maybe a couple months ago, of like uh, a picture of us from like 18 years ago, 18 years apart. Um, and so he's always been talented. Uh, you know, he used to work under the name of Cyrus and just, you know, just kind of, there was no, there's no gimmick. There's no character. He's just, you know, he was good and he's big and whatever. And uh, in, in, in JCW, Drug World Championship Wrestling, he's the big cast in Congo Kong. And just, it was the right fit the right character and the right guy and pe- like as soon as he started doing it like i was like yo this is money um and i i had i had wanted to manage him uh a few years back actually um so when when scott Moore called me about uh coming into impact and I, like the call was so like everything was really open-ended. It was, it was, there was no like, Hey, we're calling you for this purpose. It was kind of like, Hey, what's up? Uh, and so I was like, so what do, what do you think? Like, what do you, what do you see me doing? And he's like, well, first thing, one of the things we had talked about maybe was you imagine Congo Kong. And I just stopped him right there. I was like, yo, I, I would love to do that. Like that, like if, if I could pick kind of one thing to do, it would be that, um, truth be told, man, like, I like wrestling, I, I, but I, I like performing more than I like wrestling. So I would just as soon be a manager as a wrestler, like, like real talk. So uh, it, just, it, just, it was a real nice fit. And I've, I've, been a, I've been a fan of what we've done on the TV. And I think the stuff with, uh, with Joseph Park and Abyss is cool. Uh, later on, we're moving into something with, uh, with Johnny Morrison, John, or, um, what's his name? <laughs> Johnny Impact. Uh, uh, Johnny Impact, I think we did some good stuff for the last, uh, at the last set of tapings. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty jazzed about this, uh, the, the, the pair. And I, I think, um, I, I'm hoping it takes Kong to the next level. Cause if, if there's one thing I think, you know, just from, you know, coming from the outside in now impact is it's real important to get like impacting branded stars, guys that are like associated with impact the way like Rosemary is and Moose is and, um, uh, Eli Drake and, and, and people like that. Uh, and I, I'm hoping Kong can, can be in that, you know, this, of course. And, you know, I'm hoping Kong can be in that uh, same group of names. Cool. Thank you, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Stephanie from Future Magazine in UK. Uh, I'm delighted to talk to you. Uh, my question is about the zombie princess character. Uh, I, I'm really... I love this character, and I wanted to know um, how you build it, what are your influences, what what this character is representing, um, yeah, all these things. W- what is this, this zombie princess? And thank you very much. Uh, thank you. It's just delightful to talk to you as well. Uh, I mean, the, the zombie princess, it, it, it's something that, that kind of originated uh, in, in, a, in a, a promo I did years ago. I was wrestling uh, Kevin Owens, then Kevin Steen, and he had, he had made fun of the way I look. And I, I said something effective, you know, I, I don't need to look tough. I don't need to dress tough. I don't even need to talk tough. You know, uh, what I've done shows I'm tough. I can put on a tutu and tiara, call myself a princess. I'll still be the toughest guy in the room. And, and, and so the, the character, I mean, that, that's part of it, is this idea that, uh, uh, you know, in, in wrestling, there's all the, there's the crushers and the bruisers and destroyers. You know what? I'm a princess, and I'll still bite your face off. Uh, and, and beyond that, um, it, it, and so much of it is, is an expression of, uh, of, of me. Of, of who I am kind of as, as a human being and, and the androgyny of, uh, you know, that I've, I've always sort of been attracted to my entire life. And uh, it's cool when I see people reach out to me and say, uh, hey, you know, because of you, I was able to, you know, come to terms with, you know, who I am, uh, whether it's, you know, to come out of the closet or, or, or with, my, with my sexuality or gender identity, or even just like, hey, because of you, uh, I, I thought it was okay to paint my nails. Like that's cool to me. Uh, so a lot of the, the characters about just um, just embracing whoever the hell you are and just and, and, and loving it and being it and owning it and uh, making no apologies for it.
Hey, Jimmy, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com again. You were closely tied with the Bullet Club, obviously. What kind of reaction did you get from them when you uh, decided to make your move to Impact? And did they like maybe push you to join them in Ring of Honor as opposed to that? Uh, honestly, man, we we had very little like uh, uh, talk about about that sort of stuff. And they they were super gracious after uh, after you know getting fired from WWE. And I think they they felt a certain responsibility uh, for it. And then I you know I told the you know the young bucks particularly, and uh, who I go back a long ways with. Uh, I told them it was you know honestly, man, this whole thing has been a it's been a blessing. Uh, and so. Uh, but they, they've been very helpful with me as far as like, you know, hooking me up with their t-shirt guy and uh, the, the designs and, and things of that, and, like uh, sort of getting my foot back in the door of like independent wrestling, you know, man, what do I do? But as far as like career moves, uh, I, I was able to sort of handle things myself. Uh, they made no pushes one way or the other. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm close with them, but I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, we're not like best friends. You know what I mean? Like if, uh, they've got their show, they're all in show, uh, at some point, you know, if I'm, if I'm on, I'm on, if I'm not, I won't be surprised either. Uh, so you know, there's like, we're close, but we're not that close, I guess. And we're friends. They're friends. They're friends of mine, but it's not, uh, I'm not running by my, uh, every, uh, you know, career move with them, I guess. Hey, uh, this is Viju from Sportskeeda again. My question is, you famously took on Eddie Guerrero in a match uh, around, I believe, 13 years ago. Uh, do you have any memories of the night? And how, like, where does it rank in all your achievements? Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was such a cool experience, man. I was just, I was 20 years old, and uh, I, was, I was in Reading, Pennsylvania, uh, just visiting a friend, and uh, I was buddies with Paul London, and uh, I was just going to go to SmackDown. Uh, I'm sorry. I was going to hang out with him in, in Reading. And he's like, hey, just come to SmackDown and hang out with me there. Uh, so I was just, I went to SmackDown just literally to hang out with my friends. And uh, I was sort of just hanging out there, standing around. And they needed somebody to work with Eddie Guerrero. And a couple of the guys were familiar with my work. And so they're like, oh, hey, this kid over here, should uh, he can wrestle Eddie. Uh, and so they called me over. They're like, all right, yeah, take off your nail polish. Uh, take out your earrings. It's going to be you and Eddie Guerrero tonight. And at 21, I was like, ah, I mean, like, I've been around long enough not to believe anything till it happens, but nothing happens till it happens, right? Uh, so, uh, but sure enough, I started to see my name on the lineup next to Eddie Guerrero. And uh, I went up to Eddie, and I said, hey, um, I'm, I'm Jimmy. I think, I think we're going to think we're wrestling tonight. I think we're going to work here tonight. And he goes, uh, uh, Jimmy, I just want to apologize right now uh, that this match needs to be all me. Um, you know, I would love to have a competitive match, but you know, today this, it needs to be a hundred percent me. And I just want to thank you for doing this for me. I want to thank you, uh, for doing me, for being through professionalism and doing me this favor. Uh, and he was so gracious and so kind. And there I was 21 years old, like, you know, never worked for WWE before. This guy was like the man, you know, had been champion at WrestleMania. And, uh, here he was like acting like I was doing him a favor. And uh, he was so kind, so gracious. And then right before we went out, he said, uh, you know, God willing, we'll work together again under better circumstances. Uh, but I thought, you know, working with him, uh, he, he made the circumstances work together just, just great. And in the ring, he was professional. He didn't touch me. He would, you know, he's, he's, uh, you know people, he, his stuff looked great. It looked believable, it looked real. But he, he, was, he didn't touch me. And that's the art of it. That's what makes, you know, the part of what makes what, what you do in the ring so, so great. And, um, it was, it was really uh, it was an incredible learning experience in that it taught me uh, it doesn't matter uh, what where you are in the business, what the disparity is. He's been at WrestleMania. I'm a 21-year-old kid on TV for the very first time, and he treated me not just like an equal, but he humbled himself toward me. And, and, and that, that was a, such a powerful lesson that I hold, hold with me to this day that just it doesn't matter who you are in this business. It does not make you a better human being than anybody else, and it doesn't give you the right to treat anybody else like less than. Uh, Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine again. Um, you've been in this business for 19 years. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm messing up. Uh, <laughs> um, you, so, you so you've seen a lot of things. And uh, I wanted to have your opinion 
on on the current wrestling scene and the the the, the I won't say the resurrection, but this great evolution of the independent scene you've been a part of for quite a long time. And I want to thank you again. Merci. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Um, so uh, it's wonderful, man. When I got fired from WDB, I, I was in the I was in the bubble. You know, when you work when you work there, you just you're in the bubble. You can only pay attention to WDB and barely because there's so much programming. Uh, but I don't know what's going on outside of it, right? So when I got fired. I had people just kept telling me, like, yo, the independents are on fire. The independents are they're booming. The independents, everybody's drawing, everybody's getting paid. Uh, you know, Sammy Callahan was a guy that called me up, like, right away when I got fired and was, like, kind of, like, held my hands, like, reintroduced me to, to some of these, like, promoters and, and to kind of what's going on. I was, I was very gracious that, that he, uh, he, he did that for me um, and continues to do so sometimes. Uh, and I, it, it's, it's brilliant. It's great. Uh, there's, there's more, like, awesome wrestling now uh, than I think, like, ever before. Uh, there's so much great talent. There's so much good wrestling. I, I, I go out to these shows, and it's cool. It's cool to, to still wrestle on the independents and work for, for Impact, too, because I see some of these guys. I'm like, fuck, we need, to, we need to bring in some of these guys. There's a handful of guys just not off the top of my head, like, you know, Ace Romero or, or, or MJF or Zachary Wentz. Uh, uh, Myron Reed is that his name? There's there's a couple guys out in the in the Midwest area. There's like super super talented uh, guys, uh, and it's cool. It's, it's cool to come back and, and see business going well. And I, look, I'm making more money than I ever have before in my life, uh, so I'm not mad at it. I'm loving it. All right, Jimmy, this is uh, Big Ray one more time for OneWrestling.com. Now, this is the fun fact portion of the questions, okay, Jimmy? So I just wanted to know, uh, tell us a little bit about Jimmy, Jimmy Jacobs, not the character, you. I just want to know a little bit about, you know, what do you like? Do you like what movies do you like, food, music, especially music? Music tells a lot about the person. I just want to know a little bit about you, sir. Uh, that, that's interesting because uh, I don't know if there's much interesting about about Jimmy Jacobs behind the scenes, man. Uh, I mean, because honestly, I mean, this is this is what I've done with so much of my life, and it, and some of it's about finding that, you know. Um, it, right now, it's, it's been a, it's been a crazy time in my life. The past year has been like one of the most like uh, transformative uh, years of my life. Uh, as far as like, you know, going through a breakup and going to rehab and getting fired from WWE and uh, like I'm, I'm vegan now and just all sorts of like different things. I, I moved to Chicago recently. I was in Stanford, Connecticut. I'm in Chicago. Uh, so a, a lot less going on in my life. Um, I don't know, man. I was in like, I was in Thailand a couple of weeks ago. I was scuba diving for the first time, which was like awesome. Cause I like, I don't, I haven't really tried a whole lot of new things in my life. Like I've been like, I've been married to wrestling for so long and um, th this time in my life's been cool because uh, for the first time in my life, like I'm really enjoying wrestling. I'm really enjoying being in, in this business uh, for so long. It was like the single minded goal of making it to WWE and, and that, that obsession was like, I was unhealthy. Uh, and it, w it wasn't it wasn't productive. Didn't serve me. Uh, so then working for WWE and getting fired from there, uh, and, and without having that goal now. Now I don't have this like this destination in, in mind. Uh, I can just enjoy the journey. Uh, so so um, it, it, it's a cool time for me in resting. It's a cool time for me uh, otherwise. You know, the, you know what I what I really like right now. What band I really like, and they're not like popular now. I guess they used to be like ten years ago. Is Blue October? Uh, the lead singer uh, Justin Justin Fersenfeld. Uh, I went to one of his um, like acoustic shows uh, that he does, and it was great. A lot of it's about you know recovery and. Uh, and, and sobriety and then things of that nature. And, you know, I can, I can identify with, with the darkness. And I think everybody can identify with darkness at some level, uh, the darkness and then coming to the light. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's a cool time as far as, uh, that goes, I don't know, man, I, I, I read books. I, I go tanning. I go, I go do yoga. Um, this is, uh, yeah. And then I, I go on the weekends. I, I go and I wrestle professionally. It's cool. It's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thank you, man. Jimmy, have you uh, talked to Austin and or Allie about uh, the vegan life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I bought Austin Aries' book, um, which I thought was, was cool. You know, I, it was something that 
um, I just kind of started doing for, I guess, ethical reasons, or maybe it's, you know, I'm a guy that's always like lived in like extremes and it's hard to find balance. And I guess, you know, get, getting sober and then like, it's easier, like you go from like eating opiates to eating nothing but, uh, <laughs> but plants, I guess. It's, it's, it's the extremes that uh, I guess I'm drawn to. So uh, it, it seemed like uh, up from that level, of things, like I thought a thing to do. Uh, and, you know, and, and it has health, health benefits as well. And it's helping, me, it's helping me eat healthier. Like I'm not a shitty eating vegan. Like I eat like good stuff and it's nice and it's, it's, it's good to finally like kind of take care of my body for the first time in my life. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool times. Well, perfect. Jimmy, you and I will go for a vegan meal here in Chicago and uh, Nick from WrestleZone has already texted in. He said he's buying for all three of us. So we're good to go on that. Fantastic. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sportskeeda again. My question is, what is your personal relationship with Vince McMahon? And how much freedom did you have as a creative person with your own ideas? Uh, because he's been known to be a filter of sorts at times. Thank you. Uh, so, I mean, look, you have, you have freedom to, to come up with whatever ideas you want. It's just that it's, it's his sandbox and he, he's the one that says, says no. Uh, and at a certain point, like... Uh, Vince likes to, he says he likes people to challenge him, but I think only to a certain point. And that's kind of the, the, the balance you have to run there is that uh, you get to disagree with Vince like once and then that's it. <laughs> um, uh, so it, it, it's, it's cool now where, uh, you know, like, I mean, I, look, I, I dealt with Vince on a almost, uh, well, I mean, at TV. So, I mean, a, a few times a week, you know, three times a week in meetings and, and TVs. Uh, I'm, I'm not like, I wasn't like in the super inner circle, but I, like I was outside the uh, inner circle. Uh, and I, we, we didn't have a bad relationship. I don't think he actively disliked me or I, I like, I just, we, we never clicked. So we never like, I was just kind of a, a crazy eccentric, you know, flamboyant, you know, gender bending artist. And he's like, a a, a eccentric megalomaniac billionaire. Uh, so it's, it's cool now to be uh, around, around people in, in a creative aspect who um, I don't have to filter my ideas, like wondering like, Oh, is this, is this going to make him mad? Is this going to, is this idea too off the wall? So he's going to be like, God damn, what the hell is that? Uh, and I don't have to do that now. It's cool that, you know, even if, even if my idea uh, you know, bombs in the room. If, if you know, with the other guys in creative here at Impact, even with bombs, I have the freedom to 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 pitch without uh, fear of of getting yelled at or, or made made to feel stupid for pitching something that's off the wall. And uh, it, it, it's it's um it's nice to it, it's nice to feel that way now. You know. All righty, Jimmy. Well, I appreciate your time very much. Uh, we'll wrap it up with uh, with that question. Got a uh, final thought heading into Impact tonight? No final thoughts. I feel like I've given all my thoughts over the past like forty minutes. So. All right. Any big weekend plans for you? Uh, I got my buddy's wedding in New Jersey tomorrow. Then I go to Cleveland on Saturday for a show, and Texas on Sunday for a show. All righty. Sounds good, Jimmy. I appreciate it. And uh, we will speak to you again soon in media. We will be back next week uh, with the teleconference. I believe we're moving it to Tuesday next week, but uh, stay tuned. I will email everybody about the uh, time for next week. Davey Richards, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And a hero, too. <laughs> this is the dog of war, Jesse Neal, and we're with Andre Corville. That looks okay. I'm sorry, guys. Wrestling, honor, tradition. Because we're all in this for one big wrestling.